Hello and welcome. The unemployment rate is currently holding at about 24% according to the Center for Monitoring of Indian Economy. Uh, on the other hand, the number of people who are not looking for jobs are back in the job market, which means that things might be improving, but that's only uh, a small uh, uh, silver lining perhaps in, in the larger gloomy clouds that we're seeing. The other question that we are asking is, uh, there is a stimulus package or an economic response from the government. A lot of money has been promised or likely to be handed out in two, in two ways. One is uh, money that will perhaps come directly to people in the form of uh, the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act uh, uh, funds. And the second is money that could come through bank loans that are given to small and medium enterprises who in turn uh, likely have employed a lot of people who are perhaps out of jobs. The figure that we have uh, catalogued earlier is 120 million people out of jobs. And compounded with this is obviously about uh, 70 million people who form part of the migrate uh, the migrant workforce. Now, all 70 million people may not be unemployed, but a lot, lot of them might be. So the question uh, that we are posing is twofold. One is, uh, uh, how is this unemployment rate currently holding and what is the damage that it's doing? And secondly, is this stimulus likely to help in any way? And to answer this, I'm joined now by uh, Mr. Mahesh Vyas, Managing Director of the Center for Monitoring Economy. Uh, Mahesh, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure to be on your show, Bhavan. Right. So, uh, so essentially, that's the first question, uh, Mahesh. So, one is, uh, if the employment unemployment rate holding at twenty four percent, should we see it as uh, in in some ways good news, or is is it or are we at some peak of some part before or beyond which it cannot get worse? Well, in a sense, you can see it is. Uh, you can say it is good news that we are not getting worse than twenty four percent. Uh, we it, it did look for a very short moment that it could go higher than that. It did peak at 27%, for example. Uh, but after that, it came back to 21% and then scaled back to 23, 24% and seems to have stabilized at around 24%. So what we are seeing is that the unemployment rate has stabilized at 24% and uh, the labor participation rate, number of people looking for jobs, has inched up a bit. So this had gone down to 35%. It's climbed back again to over 36%, close to 37%, which is a very good sign. That is, people are not as discouraged as they were earlier. Uh, people are looking for jobs even in these difficult times also indicates that there is desperation. So who you know, will try to go out looking for a job when there are no jobs available? Obviously, it's going to be the relatively more desperate people. You don't want to expose yourself to a deadly disease. You don't want to go to work in conditions which are not the best of times to go to work. So obviously, this is desperation. This is that people cannot sustain the uh, lockdown for too long. And even in these very difficult times, are willing to go out in very adverse conditions, go out right. and look for jobs over there. So I think it's a mixed bag, but it certainly is not as bad as it could have been, which is a falling labor participation rate and a higher unemployment rate. Right. But this splits into uh, two more figures. Uh, urban unemployment is at 27 percent and rural is at 23 percent. So uh, how does one now look at it? So there has been an improvement in rural India. You're right. And that's because this is the rabi harvest season in some parts of the country, in northern India, in some parts of the country. People are getting very actively into the act of uh, this delayed uh, harvesting, sorry. But uh, in many parts of the country, you're getting ready to prepare uh, the farm sites for the kharif sowing, which should be due in sometime in, um, in early June. So, so there is activity in rural India because of the farm sector, A. B. There have been relaxations uh, in rural India. There have been more green zones over there. So some local activities have begun. And therefore, the unemployment rate in rural India has come down a bit. And the labor participation rate in rural India has gone up a bit. But the improvement are not so much in urban India. In urban India, you don't have as much relaxations. And it isn't easy to find the jobs that are lost. Right. So, so in that sense, you feel that this 27% is likely to remain higher relative to the average or mean employment unemployment rate for the country? So, urban India always has a higher uh, unemployment rate, systematically, across time. Mm. It's never been the mm. case that urban, uh, urban unemployment is lower than rural unemployment. Urban India offers better quality jobs. 
and there are better educated people in urban India. They are not willing to take up a job which is uh, equal to shoveling some dirt on your farm side and claiming to be unemployed. Uh, to be employed. So a large part of the employment in rural India is actually disguised unemployment. You can't do that in urban India. So urban India presents actually the real situation for the country that we have a very high unemployment rate, like 27%. And how would this compare to uh, unemployment rates in cities in other parts of the world if you've been looking at, or, or I mean, one is now and uh, even otherwise, uh, when, I, when I say otherwise, I mean uh, urban India in, uh, in India versus urban, urban centers in other countries. I don't track other countries much. But there's huge differences in the OECD countries, for example. Uh, unemployment in urban cities, in urban areas, in uh, uh, southern Europe, for example, is very high usually. So Spain has a very high unemployment rate, Portugal, uh, parts of Italy as well. Uh, but when it comes to other countries, it's not as bad. Uh, many of these countries, mind you, are also largely urban. Our uh, urbanization rate is much lower than those countries. But just to give you a comparison that I recall of my uh, memory is that the April uh, unemployment rate, and that's what we should be cover, uh, comparing, right. in the U.S. is 14%. April unemployment rate in the U.S. is 14%, and we have 23.5%. So, and uh, yeah, is of the order of 27%. Right, and, and, and what was this uh, figure last April? In the U.S., it was... In, in uh, India, sorry. Oh, in India, last April was around seven six six and a half to seven percent. Right. So it's six and a half to twenty seven percent in urban India. That's right. So I mean, urban India, sorry, it's urban India. No, no, no. Urban India was higher. I'm sorry. Urban India is eight and a half percent last year, and now it is twenty seven percent. Right, so it's more than three times, and I mean, this is just to—I mean, for people who are watching this, I mean, we're—I'm I'm sure in urban environments or many in urban environments, I mean, they would—they would relate to this that unemployment is up three times in uh, this our environment in in the last year. Okay, the uh, other uh, data point that you've talked about uh, is that rural India employed 276 million people in 2019-20. Uh, now that fell to 197 million. By in uh, April to uh, 2000, uh, I mean 2020. So uh, now the question uh, is, that's almost uh, almost 80 million people without jobs. Now the question is, to what extent will uh, this Narega infusion and the other kinds of infusion help? I mean, let's talk about rural and then we'll come to urban. So um, the government's move to infuse uh, more money into Manrega is a good move. Uh, it will help to some extent. It will help to some extent, but not much. Mandrega cannot solve all problems. It just helps a little bit. It will help raise the wage rate in rural India. Uh, I think the increase in Mandrega allocation compared to last year is of the order of some 13, 14% or so. So, but there is also a wage rate increase that they have promised earlier. So a large part, I mean a part at least of the allocation will go towards a higher wage rate. And only a part of it will go towards increase in the headcount of people or the number of mandates that they will employ. So I think one should expect and the allocation, I think, will also go a little higher as we go into the year. So I would expect something like a 10% or 12% increase in employment uh, under Manrega in the current year. But this will solve only a partial problem in rural India. So, but uh, so therefore, you're saying of 80, 80 million people who are out of jobs in rural India, uh, only 10% will get their jobs back. Is that? It's not. It's not possible to make that comparison. Also, but you may take that to yeah. be a thumb rule because the way Manrega is counted is number of mandates of jobs given. Number of mandates right. okay. means one percent. So it's not employment. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I'm counting on number of people employed, which is employed on a regular basis. So. Right. They're not exactly it's comparable, but I'm and, still... And not employment. Yeah, I will, I will say thumb rule is it can lead to an increase in 10% from where the employment stands today. But as you said, the fall itself was, you know, very large. So we lost 80 million jobs. We will not get 80 million jobs back again. We'll get a small fraction of that. Right. Okay. Let, let me come to the other point, uh, uh, Mahesh. So this is on the, uh, on, on the other uh, non-direct uh, intervention, uh, which is loans through uh, banks and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, similar 
efforts to basically uh, you know help uh, small and medium enterprises and maybe since they are also definitely affected uh, uh, provide uh, jobs or get back jobs or uh, manage to pay income so how do you seeing that uh, the the measures taken to uh, extend any help to the msmes uh, or anything excepting the mandrega and a few other things which are said i think a large part of the of the economic package is going is actually proposing to increase the indebtedness in the country whether it is hawkers or it is msmes or it is anybody else i don't see much merit in that i don't think there is a need for us to increase indebtedness in the country if you give liquidity if you give higher credit facilities even if it is a guaranteed loan it's going to lead to indebtedness ultimately npas which the government may pay up to the banks if they if they lend but that's not what the economy wants today what the economy wants is more spending power unconditional unilateral spending power so i don't think raising indebtedness is the best of things to do the uncertainty today that we have regarding the economy tomorrow when will we recover etc is so high that anyone who takes that loan today is obviously taking a loan without being certain of how he's going to repay that loan so i think giving loans in these conditions is not the most uh, wise so unless thing. i mean so unless the the unwritten uh, maybe uh, understanding is that uh, these loans will be either given in a very easy fashion or uh, uh, or they may be re ready to write them off well we are then uh, into court spoiling the customers isn't it they start getting used to these loan mailers which are never going to get paid back Uh, we had this in a big way in the past, and we have created a problem for ourselves in farm loans being repeatedly waived out. If this goes out to the MSME sectors now, we are going to create a very unhealthy uh, credit um, uh, culture in the country, and I think that's not a very good thing to do for the long run growth of India. Right. So you're saying that, and this is what you said in our last interview as well, that you would have preferred a direct cash handout. The figure that you used was twenty thousand rupees for two months of, uh, uh, you know, no income, uh, rather than uh, this indirect way of trying to transmit, which in any case is going to be increasing the indebtedness. Well, it will increase the indebtedness of those people who can have the guts to go and get that loan today. Who I will say to a large extent, to a large extent, not entirely, are also going to be dishonest. the honest person who is very seriously in trouble may not take that loan so it's the same right. problem that we have in many other cases that if you are a farmer you can get a loan under the earlier pm kisan uh, facility but if you are a landless laborer you don't get it so i think it's important for us to go beyond these uh, these means of giving money which is going to spoil the credit culture in the country i think we need to worry about that right uh, last question mahesh so uh, as we look ahead we were uh, by now we were supposed to be out of the lockdown but we are not particularly in mumbai and uh, some parts of the country particularly the economically uh, active parts of the country uh, and we are out of it in uh, other parts uh, how do you see this playing out in coming weeks uh, particularly again from uh, the unemployment numbers that you track and an overall economy impact well i am slightly hopeful uh, because uh, the number of activities that seems to be springing up and the little news that is coming uh, it's like uh, it used to be two steps forward and three steps backward now i'm seeing three steps forward and two steps backward which is progress so uh, i think there is greater easing of the restrictions there is an expectation that uh, you know in some time in a foreseeable future not too far away we could reach some kind of acceptance of this disease and there will be Uh, some kind of a resistance towards it so i think this is moving in the right direction that there are more relaxations than earlier uh, i am told that delhi and bangalore are kind of effectively getting back into slightly normal working conditions this hopefully will spread to more places i spoke about two large cities so i think we cannot sustain these compartmentalized silos in which economic activity happens for too long but in the last few weeks i've seen this getting a little more extended from a little more hopeful if you go on in this fashion then we will be back to a different but still a better normal uh, peace time again right 
Right, Mahesh, and and we will of course pick it up then and uh, and uh, and uh, quiz you once again on how the numbers are looking and whether we are seeing uh, things improving and how. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you.